But so you've got the 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 ten steps open. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so number one. So first of all, um, when you're trying to improve, just focus on a couple things at a time. Um, so when you go into a game, be like, I am going to work on number four, whatever it is, <laughs> um, and just focus on doing that because um, it's pretty easy to just like pretty much AFK in the brain while you storm league and kind of go into auto autopilot mode. Yeah. But if you actually want to improve, you have to be intentionally trying to improve something when you're going into a game. Makes sense. Yeah. So um, number one, take ownership and focus on your own play. Um, it's really easy and we know everybody likes to just blame like teammates. <laughs> but there's a reason why, you know, people can get on a smurf and get to master in less than a week. And it's because you actually do control the, the outcome of the game. So just focus on yourself. Blame yourself for the loss. Always ask yourself after a game what you could have done differently. It's always good to go back and check out um, your own VODs if you can. Um, that's why I kind of like streaming because it's like instantly in a pod. Pretty, pretty easy to go back and look at a team fight. Yep. But, um, yeah. Don't talk someone out of a draft pick because they're probably going to pick it anyway, or you're going to tilt them or, you know, it, if they're going to pop off on Nova, then let them pop off on Nova. Maybe it's their best hero, you know? Yep. Um, suggestion, you can suggest like, okay, we need more wave, wave clear or things like that. While you're in game, never dwell on a play that's already happened. Um, no need to comment on someone's death. Just focus on going forward always. Um, you can make suggestions for future team strikes, team fight strategies. Example, I'll follow up with my leap on the blush shield or things like that. Mm -hmm. Like the positive more, intent, basically. Yeah, if it's gonna be helpful going forward into the game, you can say it. Otherwise, but here, the more you type in a game, the more you increase your chance of losing. <laughs> I wish I could know the nut, like the statistic on that, but I guarantee you it's it. Oh no! I guarantee you that that's a thing. Like I guarantee it. <laughs> Mute anyone who shows any sign of toxicity, because it'll probably just make you play worse. Yep. <laughs> so true. And they're not going to change throughout the game. No. They're they're not going to offer anything productive going forward. Um, number two, don't int slash feed. So basically, anytime that enemies are MIA, they're not oh. showing on, on the on the map. You can't be out in lane. You can't rotate alone. Um, you have to be very the where you can be in the map is very limited. I have a question on that one actually. So sure. usually, I've heard like stay like mm, like less like halfway or less basically in lane. Mm -hmm. Feels I like you still get caught out sometimes even if you're halfway so is it like gate is it like somewhere in between well it also depends what hero you're on to like do you have a disengage sure. are you sustaining like if you're a Leoric, you're pretty you're safe you're, you're safe to soak a wave because you can just e out like you're probably okay mm -hmm. so you but if you're a squishy bala like you literally need to be inside your fort <laughs> yeah yep and let let the wave crash so it kind of depends on the hero you're on um but yeah. I guess that doesn't really matter, right? Like if you're like, not that it doesn't really matter, but I guess like if you're Vala, you could stay stand at the wall and it's like, you're still getting the XP. So it doesn't, exactly. it doesn't exactly. make a difference. Yeah, let the wave crash, pick up the soak there. Got it. Um, uh, hopefully they'll show eventually. Like they, but sometimes people are very patient and they'll be waiting a bush forever to gank someone. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. In team fights, make sure you're not running away from your team. A lot often, like, oh, there's an Illidan on me, and they just like, you know, they start running away from the team fight. <laughs> but you're I actually have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> you're actually killing yourself if the more you isolate yourself from the team. Honestly, the more you run to your team, just having the bodies around you is usually enough to like make that person back off, or, or at least your team can help you. They can stun or heal you or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. Do not do invades or aggressive plays unless the entire team is on board or you know where the enemies are, like if they're dead or whatever. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's all dependent on where the enemies are or where you're allowed to be. Um, yep. Do not start a fight unless the fight is necessary or advantageous. Um, do you have a numbers advantage, a talent tier advantage, an alts advantage? Like are they're all their alts are down? Um, is it a worthy objective? Do you need to catch up on XP? Or the the only other time that you'd want to take a five v five is if you have a stronger team fight they're, and they're like a macro based comp where your macro is falling apart and you need to take team fights to win the game. 
So on that note, and you might actually get to this in five, so stop me if I'm going ahead, but like okay. a lot of times, especially where I'm at, right? Like people will fight a talent mm -hmm. down or two talents down, or they'll try to take boss when the whole team is up and not <laughs> showing like, do you, do you go with the team or it, because like sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. It's very... Uh, kind of situational dependent. If it's really late game, uh, it's still it's still so situational. It's very very situational. You kind of have to. It's hard to know. I know exactly what you mean because I've been there too. In, in in those ranks, you can ping retreat a lot. It also kind of depends what role you are. If you're the healer, I would just go with them. Mm -hmm. If you're like an off laner that can actually do something if your team dies or like while they're in tank, basically. Like you can go soak a lane, you can go um, get a camp or something, and then just leave them die. Mm -hmm. Unless, unless them dying is going to cause the game to end. That's why it's like situational too. Like mm. if it's level 20 and your core is already open and they want to take a fight down 20s, you kind of just have to go. Yeah. Right. Because you're not going to defend the core on your own. Yep. But okay. if you know, like if they're like invading, uh, you're an all track and the enemy team is getting the top boss with their tens and your team wants to contest the boss but you don't have tens but the fort's still there i would just not even go with the team because mm -hmm. the because the boss is only going to get the fort mm -hmm. so let them get their three kills and ping you or three deaths sorry let them have their three deaths and ping you to whatever forever but yeah. just <laughs> just leave them die go soak a lane so you're at least offsetting their deaths with some soak mm -hmm. or get a camp or anything else. I mean, obviously, again, it depends what role you're on and, and things like that. But you kind of just have to use your best judgment okay. for that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, OK, this is uh, Ina is on Kaylee. Hello. <laughs> and then possession correctly in team fights, which I'll touch down um, in number four. <laughs> Number three is soak, especially early game. So until seven, a wave is worth more than a kill. So yep. don't even let one experience or get lost. Like it, it can add up. So um, if your team's going for a gank or something before seven, but you're going to lose a like, top wave or something, just go get the wave. It's just mm -hmm. not even worth it. Um, but yeah, like letting soak cra crash and like not get picked up should hurt your soul. <laughs> So number four, pop off in team fights, follow tank engagements, keep track of threatening or lethal cooldowns. I don't know what this little symbol is. Oh, yeah. Okay. So for example, um, like an ETC has like this invisible circle around him that you can't step into unless you know his his slide is down. Yeah. Once you see him use his slide, you have you can basically walk anywhere. I mean, depending on what other heroes there are. But um, you need to be watching these cooldowns to get maximum efficacy out of your hero, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, trade better into their trading into you. Take minimal damage, so don't stand in uh, flame strikes or pass living bombs. Don't clump. The more you clump, the more value the enemy team gets out of their cooldowns. If they're landing four or five man alts, that's just basically an unwinnable team fight at that point which happened a ton in your ggs games by the way yeah. <laughs> a ton a ton a ton so and watch out for that um collapse on same target as team so whoever your other dps is hitting you should probably be hitting that person too so go on like adventures alone um have a plan for your own combos and counter engages so are you going to use your Ring of Frost on a leap, on Mosh, um, and counter engages too? What are you going to do when you get entombed? Or like, how are you going to help your teammate when Learch entombs one of them, basically? Yep. So question on like 1 and 5, well, 4.1, 4.5, I guess. Okay. Like, sometimes tank will engage and then there's like a person who's like really low. So like... And it's like, if you just hit them, then they're not going to die. But if, like, two people hit them, then they might die. So it's like, 
how do you balance kind of like going on what the tank engages on versus getting a kill? Sometimes if they're different. If you can secure a kill, you you do it for sure. Okay. Yeah. If yeah, if you're going to get the kill, um, we'll like 100% do it. Okay. Does that help? Yes, it does. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so number five is play with your team. So part of Storm League, especially solo queue, you don't just read what your enemy, the enemy team is doing. You have to read what your team wants to do. It's kind of like reading body language because you're not in comms, right? Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see where your team, what they're trying to do. You can almost read when um, an ETC is wanting to slide or things like that. So you really just have to get used to reading your team. And then down to this one, you can suggest calls, but ultimately be prepared to switch. Like if you know the call is like, let's just take this fort down, but your tank's not really stepping up to melee it, then you kind of have to back off and be prepared to switch to do what your team wants to do. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I'm just gonna read chat for a second. Oh, Sonya leaping the gates, yep. I'm showing the secrets. <laughs> This is where I struggle, spend too much time playing with, with myself, yes. I think a lot of people do, and I did too, for a while, because I wanted to shot call, and I'm like, I know, I know this is the way, I know this is the right answer, but it's not the right answer if your team's not seeing it. Uh, okay. Use only your three to four strongest heroes. Um, you're just gonna be better on them. You're gonna react better on them. Um, you're gonna... The more experience you have in one hero, the more prepared you are for like all situations, basically. Mm. And uh, it's just it's just best to, to stick to your strongest heroes. But it within those heroes, know which are good on which maps, what counters them, what they counter, what they synergize with, when they can safely be picked in draft. For example, I like picking Orphea, but I'll only pick her on Hanamura and Towers of Doom. I'll only pick her later in draft because she has so many counters. I'll never first pick my Orphea. Sort of thing so know how to draft your three to four strongest heroes do you have any suggestions on resources for that uh <sighs> i don't know any resources for it now i can i can if I you have specific <laughs> it's just like yeah it's uh i mean it's it you kind of just learn it from playing it i guess it's yeah if you have cool. questions I can answer them. I would say like, okay, you, you get drafted into a map, Garden of Terror. What do you think, it, you have to know what's strong on the map, right? So what do you yeah. think is strong on in Garden of Terror? I mean, like Diablo is strong because there's all these walls. Mm -hmm. um, probably someone like Genji could be strong just for like escapes, I guess. Uh, but like Murky for camps, maybe Malfail for camps. Mm -hmm. So Sonia. this, Ma like Garden of Terror is really macro intensive. Camps are very, very important. And because the objective is a sieging objective, you need to have heroes that can de-siege really well as well, mm -hmm. which is um, one reason why I would never pick or I mean, I used to, I guess. you can, depending on your draft, you can like, or if you has terrible siege and wa wave clear or like a sieging objective. So I wouldn't pick her on that map. Oh, actually, can I ask you a dumb question? Yeah. Um, so how do you know if a hero has good siege damage? Because like, all I think about is like damage, right? Like, I do so, X amount of damage. <laughs> uh, heroes with who are either auto attackers, who basically like good sustained damage, okay. or mages with lower cooldowns. Like, cooldowns are a big thing here. Like, for example... Why am I drawing a blank on mages? Chrome, like Chromie, her W is like a 14 second cooldown. While it does like huge damage, it only does it every 14 seconds. Mm -hmm. So the amount of value, what's pushing into the structure, it's going to get a lot of extra value within that 14 seconds versus, you know, a Rainer with Exterminator, who's just going to like constantly shred this the, uh, see the whatever's pushing down. Does that make sense? Yes, that totally makes sense. Okay, yeah, so just look at cooldowns, basically, um, and if they have any PvE talents. 
Like a lot of heroes have PvE talents. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just gonna read comments for a second. My only emote I streamed affiliate just for this. <laughs> nice. <laughs> good job. Good job. Most websites that suggest builds have the info. Yeah. It's hard though, because it's just like raw stats of like, okay, Uther does well on the Cassia. Okay, well, why? It's better to know the whys than just like, okay, like I've memorized like 50 heroes that are and their counters, but you don't really understand why. <laughs> yeah, and it's Ina is on that we're talking to. Hi, gangsta. Poking, zoning, yeah. So Spali mentioned that poking and zoning is good on Garden of Terror as well. Mm. But uh, eventually, you do have to defend an objective. I think it's pretty, it's pretty impossible to never have to, like, to get through the game without going through defending one objective. So um, you definitely, it's it's a struggle to play that map without any wave clear. Yeah. Like, wave clear and camps are so important on that map. It's, like, super, super important. Yep. Also, by the way, no need to uh, mute yourself when you're talking to chat. I'm not streaming, okay. so <laughs> okay. it might be easier for you. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Coaching with Candy Hype, no looting. Man Smurf being a sub okay. that makes sense. has. Uh, don't use Smurf Merc. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes you get the Smurfs on your team. It balances out. It balances out. Okay, moving forward. Have at least one hero per role like um well i would say you can safely have one role that like i basically never play here a uh, healer like mm -hmm. i think you can safely avoid one role if you want to <laughs> <laughs> but at least be able to fill the other ones um at least have one hero for it yep. if you can't flex make sure to stay at the beginning of the draft i can't oh my god that's my pet peeve when it's like the one mm -hmm. person has to pick and they're like, oh, well, I can't heal. And I'm like, well, hover something or say something at the beginning of draft. Yep. <laughs> um, all right. Or know how to play every uh, role at least a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Think about the enemy team. This is super, super important. And um, something I only really started thinking about in Diamond, but it, <laughs> it makes a huge difference. It like drastically changes your decision making process when you are keeping track of track of where they are mm. so you want to know where they are you want to know where they're going what they're doing are they on a camp are they did they just i uh, rotate from mid like you saw them mount up and leave um things like that yep control vision and check bushes i mean this is mostly a tank job but anybody can check a bush with a spell yep so if your tank's doing that more that's good. So if, <laughs> if your tank's not doing it, which they should, but it's okay. There's a lot of people who don't know how to tank in Storm League. Make sure you're checking bushes or like pinging danger too. To the, maybe the tank will get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, use your advantages to get value and always prioritize structures. This goes both ways with pushing and defending. Like mm. you get kills, but you know you've got a boss on your keep. Unfortunately, you got to go clear the, the boss. <laughs> yep. But if you get kills and your lanes are safe, then go go get structures. Don't go and get camps. Go just kill the structures. Yep. Um, getting structure damage here and there actually really builds up over time and really puts your team ahead overall. Right, because you get like catapults and like mm -hmm. you can die and you'll respawn, but like your structure is not coming back unless you have an app, I guess. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like even if you can get one tower down from a gate, just get it and it makes the next time you push that much easier, you're going to get more value out of your next push. Yep. Makes sense. No map basic strats and timing. So all camps spawn at one and all objective countdowns start at 2.30. So they'll start the 30 second cooldown or countdown for the objective coming up. Except for Garden of Terror, which I think, I think starts at 2.20 and then it spawns at 2.50. I'm pretty sure that's it. I can't remember exactly, but pretty sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then lastly, um, practice your micro and try mode because you're, I mean, like some games only get like two team fights or like, you know, and a few brawls here and there. So you don't want to be messing up your combos mm -hmm. in, in the, and you don't get as much practice if you're only going to team fight like twice a game. Mm -hmm. So go into try mode and practice your combos over and over and over again for the heroes that you want to play. 
Okay. Um, and stutter stepping should be like, you shouldn't even have to think about stutter stepping. Are you comfortable stutter stepping? Depends on the hero. I've been okay. and I've been trying like I do like the A and the click, mm -hmm. which is easy for me. Someone told mm -hmm. me to try to like bound the uh, the attack key to, to like my mouse and like my my uh, my hand just like breaks <laughs> when I try <laughs> to do that. So I don't know. Um, do you have a click on autocast or quick cast? Um, I have whatever you're supposed to have. <laughs> I forget. Quick cast off. Or yeah, did you yeah. did you change it? Uh, I would recommend I put. You did change it. Okay. I would recommend at least having A on on quick cast so that you just have to click the button instead of instead of A and then click. Um, oh, I see. I don't know actually if I changed that. Yeah, I would recommend putting that on on quick cast, but hmm. I know that some people don't. I know that even some really high ranked players don't have it on quick cast, but I I can't imagine not having that on quick cast. But. Um, yeah, go and try that in try mode and try different things and just practice stutter stepping until you literally do not have to think about it. It's also a, a good opportunity to practice your stutter stepping when you're um, on camps. It's like mm -hmm. the easiest way to practice. Yep. Uh, hero combos. Know your hero talents and when to adjust them. So if you're if you're drafting one of your three to four heroes, you better not just be following a, a talent build just because you you should be. Picking talents based on the heroes that are in the game. Thank you, RG, yep. RBG Life. That makes sense. That's something I'm definitely guilty of. Of just like uh, just using the same build no matter what. Um, it depends on the hero, but yeah, sometimes. Like yeah. Orphea, honestly. Yeah. So um, honestly, I love going in in try mode and just mess like Orphea. I've gone in try mode and tried all her different builds and to see which one was the highest DPS and. Mm. I don't know. It's really fun to go and play in try mode and just like really understand your hero more and and just you know get that micro really into your fingers. Yep, that makes sense. Oh, and I guess maybe the other one that you don't have on this um, on this list, but I guess like when doing camps, like kill that when you're doing the big camp, kill like the little wizard guy first. Yes, kill right. Yeah, kill the wizard guy first because you're, because then they don't have spell armor. Yeah, yeah. And then another thing you can do is run in circles so that only two of them are hitting you at any one point, so you'll take a lot less damage. Ooh, they, okay. Yeah, if you run, if you stutter step in a circle on a bruiser camp, yeah, then one guy can't catch up. He's just like running in a circle and he can't hit you. <laughs> got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. 